All right, hey guys, it's Max, and I'm gonna be talking about some more specific features with the Sherpa 100 AC from Goal Zero. So uh, I have an unboxing video of this. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. This is more of a follow-up and going into more specific features of this system. So let's get into it. All right, so I will be just referring to some highlighted things I referred to in the manual. So uh, let's go in order here. So the first thing, we'll talk about the these four buttons here on each side. So we have these little triangular-ish curvy buttons. So this one is clearly the power button. So I could turn it on, but I could also reset the system by holding this down for, I think, about eight seconds. But why would you want to reset this? Well, the thing is, is if I hold this triangle button down, so it says, since last reset, you have watt hours in and the watt hours out, so you can keep track of the uh, amount of power you're using, say, for a certain trip that you're on. You could uh, keep track of how much came in, how much you power you used, but then you could reset this screen so then you can uh, use it for a different uh, activity or something like that. So that's one of the purposes of the reset. And then we have this button down here, this check mark, and this has to do with alternating different features or settings for the USB PD ports and then the AC port, which is right here. Let's see this thing, there we go. So that's just turning on the inverter. But, so if we keep scrolling through this, these settings, we can arrive at first the USB-C PD port. So for this setup for the PD, we can see that it's on auto, which means that it will auto detect whether it needs to use power from the battery to charge a device that you want this to charge, or it will detect whether you are trying to charge the Sherpa from a different power source. So if you need to figure out whether the, if the auto feature is not working and say you're trying to use this to charge your cell phone, how, but the ports are, they're saying that, uh, they're saying the opposite. So maybe they're saying that you're trying to charge the Sherpa from some, your cell phone and that's obviously not right. Then you can click this little check and then you could switch it to whether it's an input, so you see that little the little uh, square, or you can switch it to output. So you can switch to whichever one you uh, you need, whether you're trying to charge from it or you're trying to charge it. So that's what this check mark is for. And then I'll also show you how you can use that for the AC port. So USB A's that doesn't apply, but the AC output. So check this out. We have something called auto timeout and we have something called no timeout. So um, this check mark is also used. This button is also used to switch between the two, as you can see. And then the auto timeout feature means that if you're using the AC port and you have this on, so when you press this on and the blue light goes on, that means the inverter is working. So there is, there are, there is power being used even when you're not plugging anything into the AC port. And you could see that by the watts. So see how many watts? There's a 2.6 watts are being used right now just by having the inverter on. So what you can do is have it on auto timeout. And this means if I keep this going and don't touch it and don't plug anything into it, after five minutes, this whole thing will shut down and just power off so it conserves energy and I think that's an awesome feature I have no idea why you would have it on no timeout but it's a great feature so I'm gonna leave it on auto timeout turn this baby off come on there we go okay so that's what this check mark feature is and then we'll get into some more features in a second, but let me go ahead and read through the manual in order so that I could show you all the different features this thing has to offer. So next here we have 
let's go over the eight millimeter input section. So back to the screen, I'll click it here. I'll hold this little triangle button to get the display settings. And then I'll keep clicking until I see eight millimeter input. And so that's what this is. It says 22 volts max. So this is for a solar panel connection. And this is uh, Goal Zero's proprietary connection. So I believe you can only use Goal Zero panels for this, but I think on their website, they have some other options if you are trying to connect maybe a third party solar panel to this port. So you can check that out. However, this panel is capable of, or this connection is capable of receiving up to 50 watts of solar power. And that is, from my research, by far the most solar input you could have uh, for any any power bank. So, I mean, I've looked on uh, Renogy is another website that has uh, power banks and solar panels, all that kind of stuff. And they, I believe they had a, a solar charger that was kind of similar to this, but it was not able to, it, it, I think the maximum it could take in was 30 something watts, but that was from like two separate connections and it had nothing to do really with a solar panel input. But so far, this is the fastest solar charger or solar power bank that I've seen in terms of wattage. Anyway, so the eight millimeter, eight millimeter input is right here. And you could see that it has the watt reading and the volts reading. So you can have your solar panel and connect up to a 50 watt. So like a Boulder 50 or a Nomad 50 solar panel, both of those are rated for 50 watts, but you can connect this, connect the solar panel to this, and you can adjust your solar panel by the watts that are coming in. So say it's like a 50 watt solar panel. So if you're, um, if you're thinking about efficiency losses as well as that, you'll get about 40 watts maximum out of that. So say the watt reading is only at like 30 or 35 and you want to get it to 40, it's a clear day. So you can adjust the solar panel angle depending on where what angle it's on to get the maximum amount of wattage. So reading this meter while you have the solar panel connected will get you the best angle and the most amount of watts coming in so that you could charge this thing fast. And from 50 watts, so getting 50 watts in here, you, you can get up to a it's four to eight hours for this thing to recharge. So that's pretty fast for a solar panel on a power bank, uh, fastest I've seen, but that's the eight millimeter input. So next year, I'm going to talk about pass through charging. So this is just from the manual. And they talked about the uh, how it's possible to recharge other devices while you while the Sherpa is being charged. So what's awesome, you can charge this system while it's charging other things. And that's pretty cool. I know that's very convenient. So that's a nice thing to uh, mention. And it's just a nice feature overall. And then drawing too much power. So this is interesting. I didn't realize this, but you can see in the manual that it says the Sherpa can output 170 watts by utilizing all its ports at once. So I'm not quite sure how that adds up because if you're using both of these 60 watt uh, outputs, so you're using them as outputs, 120 watts right there, this has a maximum of 100, so that's already over the 170 watt limit that they said. So first off, I didn't even realize this system could go up to 170 watts by using all those ports. So I would I would be hesitant on, on using that much power with this. I, in my other video, uh, I'll link to it above, it's about the Yeti 200X and how I blew out the AC port by overdoing the amount of uh, output from the AC port. Um, so I'm not gonna do any more testing on this system on how much power it can output because I've already messed up one of my Goal Zero products with that. And I was using the Goal Zero product incorrectly. I was using it for too long. And so this system, it could probably do what it says and get up to 170 watts out of it. But that may overheat the system after a short period of time. But um, it's up to your discretion. If Goal Zero says you could do it, then you could do it. So 
that is that feature 170 watts maximum and then another thing just to highlight here we have the overheating section and i underlined specifically when using the ac port do not block the fan on the back of the sherpa so the ac port uses the, the inverter as i've discussed and so when you have this powered on the inverter uh, is going to power whatever you you need but this is the fan on the back and if that is covered, maybe you have it against something, or maybe like it's against really close to something, then it has a pretty high potential of overheating. When that happens, it will let you know. But uh, just make sure to keep that fan covered, or <laughs> just make sure to keep the fan uncovered. And then lastly here, I wanna talk about the warranty. So for my, for my Yeti 200X, that is a, that has a different warranty than this one. This one is 12 months, which is not bad, but with my Yeti 200X, it had a warranty of two years. I had to register my product and then I would have my two year warranty. And that's for the Yeti 200X and higher in terms of portable power stations. So this is a 12 month warranty, still good, but it's not as good as the other ones or as the more powerful uh, portable power stations. And so that's about all I have for you guys. If you have any other questions on this system, go ahead and leave me a, a comment below and I'll uh, go over that feature. And uh, that's pretty much it. Comment, like, and uh, subscribe to my channel. Hit the bell if you enjoy this content. And uh, also check out my website. I'll link it below, but I have just a ton of information on off-grid technology that uh, you might enjoy. So check that out and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.